Hello, and welcome to Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael, and this is the sixth video in the series on radiographic technique. In this video, we'll be looking at some pharmacological agents used in medical imaging. We'll be looking at their functions, dosage, how they're administered, side effects and contraindications. Over the past four videos, we talked about certain pharmacological agents that are used to improve the contrast of a radiographic image. Contrast media are not the only pharmacological agents or drugs used in radiography. Other drugs you'll find being used in a radiology department include antispasmodics, gastrokinetics, antihistamines, and steroids. Let us look at these in a bit more detail. First off, the antispasmodics. One example of this is hycosine N-butyl bromide, commonly marketed as buscopan. Buscopan is an anticholinergic. This means that it blocks the acetylcholine receptor, preventing acetylcholine from working. Now, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that causes increased intestinal motility and gastric secretion. It practically increases bowel movement. Thus, when buscopan blocks the activity of acetylcholine, bowel movement is reduced. This is good because, when the abdomen is being radiographically examined, bowel movement causes movement on sharpness. Thus, when buscopan is used to reduce intestinal motility, greater image quality is observed as there is less movement on sharpness. Buscopan is usually administered intravenously with a dosage of 20 mg. The major advantage of buscopan is its low cost. However, it causes anti-muscarinic side effects like blurred vision, dry mouth, tachycardia, gastric dilatation, and urinary retention. Because of these side effects, buscopan should not be used on patients with angle closure glaucoma. This is a rare type of glaucoma in which the drainage system of the eye is obstructed, causing a buildup of pressure within the eye. Buscopan would only make this worse. Also, patients with paralytic ileus should not use buscopan. In paralytic ileus, there is already little or no bowel movement. Buscopan would worsen the condition of such a patient. It is also contraindicated in prostatism. This is because patients with prostatism suffer urinary retention, which is also one of the side effects of buscopan. Another antispasmodic is glucagon, commonly marketed as glucagen. You probably know glucagon is a hormone that stimulates the production of sugar. Apart from this function, glucagon also helps to reduce intestinal motility and gastric secretion, producing effects similar to those of buscopan. The dosage for glucagen is 0.3 mg per kilogram of the patient for a barium meal and 1 mg per kilogram for a barium enema. It is also administered intravenously. Glucagon is a more powerful antispasmodic than buscopan. Also, it acts for a short period of time. This is good because it prevents it from interfering with the bowel transit time. What this means is that, while you need an antispasmodic to prevent bowel movement, you wouldn't want it to act for too long on the bowel. Because if it acts for too long, it will cause a delay in the movement of the stomach contents to the small intestine. In a barium follow-through exam, contrast media needs to move from the stomach to the small intestine. If the antispasmodic stops bowel movement for too long, this movement of contrast media is delayed and the examination is made longer. So, by acting for a short period of time, glucagon ensures the exam is not prolonged due to slower gastric emptying. A disadvantage of glucagon however is that it is more expensive than buscopan. And because it is a protein molecule, it has a tendency to cause hypersensitivity reactions. It is contraindicated in conditions like glucagonoma, insulinoma, and fecromocytoma. Another type of pharmacological agents used are the gastrokinetic agents. An example is metoclopramide, commonly marketed as Maxilon. While antispasmodics prevent intestinal motility and gastric secretion, gastrokinetic agents perform the exact opposite. They are dopamine antagonists. This means that they prevent the action of dopamine. Dopamine causes a decreased intestinal motility and gastric secretion. Thus, by preventing the action of dopamine, gastrokinetic agents like Maxilon cause increased intestinal motility and gastric secretion. With faster bowel movements, contrast media travels from the stomach to the small intestine in less time. This allows barium follow-through investigations to be performed faster. Maxilon is administered orally or intravenously, with a dosage of 20 mg. Like we have mentioned, Maxilon speeds up the exam time by allowing barium to transit faster from the stomach to the small intestine. Another advantage is that it has an antiemetic effect, this means that it prevents vomiting. This is very helpful in nauseated patients. However, Maxilon causes certain drug-induced movement disorders known as extrapyramidal side effects. 
Examples of these are irregular movements, muscle spasm, and tremor. This is observed especially at high doses of Maxilon. Next, antihistamines. An example is diphenhydramin, commonly marketed as Benadryl. In the previous video, we learned that histamines can be released when contrast media is administered on a patient. And these histamines cause many inflammatory reactions, leading to symptoms like itching and flushing. Benadryl helps to block the histamine receptor, preventing the action of histamine. 50 mg of Benadryl is given intravenously immediately before administering contrast media. Its side effects include drowsiness, blurred vision, and dry mouth. Next are steroids. One example is methylprednisolone, commonly marketed as medrol. It is the immune system that produces the chemicals that mediate contrast media reactions. Steroids are potent immunosuppressants. They suppress the actions of the immune system, preventing many contrast media reactions from happening. Medrol is commonly in a tablet form and is administered in two oral 32 mg doses. The first dose is given 12 hours before contrast media is administered, while the second dose is given 2 hours before contrast media. Its side effects include nausea, vomiting, headaches and sweating. Another type of steroids is hydrocortisone, commonly marketed as solucortif. Like methylprednisolone, it suppresses the immune system and prevents contrast media reactions. Its dosage is 200 mg, administered intravenously immediately before contrast media is given. This is where its advantage over methylprednisolone lies. If you remember, methylprednisolone has to be given 12 and 2 hours before contrast media for it to work. This means that it cannot be used for emergency examinations that require contrast media. Hydrocortisone on the other hand does not need to be given in advance. If an emergency examination comes up, it can be given immediately and still work. Also, hydrocortisone is administered intravenously, making it useful for patients who are unable to take oral medications. Its side effects include nausea, headaches, and diarrhea. That concludes this video on pharmacological agents used in medical imaging. We look forward to your questions and comments in the comments section or via email. If you love this video and would want more content, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do enjoy the learning process and take care.